everybody, this is Joy Halstead and thank you for joining us with Soapbox. Tonight I have some very special guests. I'm just really honored to have them both on the show tonight. But before I get into introductions, I want to thank our underwriters. Um, one would be Pieces Pizza. They have really wonderful pizza and they're located on 21st between Capitol and N Street. And we really appreciate uh, them sponsoring us and we actually get to eat the pizza um, and that helps with the, our people to keep going through this process. I um, also want to thank our other underwriter, that's James Israel with Humor Times, who has just celebrated the 25th anniversary and uh, we're very happy for him and um, hopefully people will pick up on this and get a subscription. It's a wonderful a little newspaper and very enjoyable. So right now I'm going to go ahead and introduce, introduce our guests. I have Fatima Garcia and I have Al Rojas and they are with the AFLCIO which is the longer title. The Labor Council for Latin American Advancement, AFLCIO Sacramento Chapter. And they've been on the road and what their, their um, causes right now is to boycott Driscoll Berries. Um, I don't think most people are aware of what goes on with the people that are actually picking the berries for us to consume. And I just feel it's really important for people to start realizing where their food comes from and who, who is getting it on our table and what they have to go through to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw it over to Fatima to get us started on this subject. Thank you. Thank you for having us here today. Uh, we are really excited to be here today. Very honored. Um, thank you for the opportunity. So uh, last year on March 17th of 2015, uh, 70,000 uh, agricultural workers in San Quintin, Baja California, which is five hours uh, away from the the San Diego border, uh, they, they walked out of the fields in demand of better wages. Um, they last year were getting paid six dollars a day for ten plus working hours so they were working, um, they weren't getting paid hourly, they were getting paid by the day and it was six dollars a day uh, by Berry Mix and uh, Rancho Los Pinos which uh, Driscoll's is uh, it, it's an investor in them. They Driscoll's buys the uh, their strawberries from these companies, um, and aside from that, they also uh, want to end the child labor that happens in these fields, and uh, end the sexual harassment am amongst the women in the fields as well. Um, they're also asking for health um, for health insurance. Uh, health care benefits for for the workers and our thing is if we protect the workers we protect you the consumer to ensure that we have a safe and clean product um, on our tables to feed our children and our family. Uh, Al if you want to talk a little bit about the pictures that are being shown these are actually the houses of the agricultural workers in Baja California um, this is their live-in situation, and you can talk a little bit more about what happened. Well, m many of the people in the region, in San Quintin, predominantly go back almost 40, 50 years. They've always been a continuous migration, obviously, to cross the border, especially after the North American Free Trade Agreement was signed back in 1994 by then President Clinton. And by doing that, they basically disallowed the real restrictions of enforcement of labor laws and also uh, health protections and also the whole question of immigration issues and also the free flow of people too as much as the North American Free Trade Agreement was dealing with free flow of products by corporations in this country to Mexico to be assembled uh, in factories and in maquiladores in Mexico. But more so than that, um, many of the people who are there after the onslaught of the uh, right after right prior to uh, the deportations of 1994 of thousands and thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands I would say once that North American Free Trade Agreement was passed well all of a sudden the uh, 
economic situation, Mexico uh, really went into a turn, a deep dive for the agricultural uh, sector in Mexico, where you have corn that now has been eliminated as what we call a commodity, as uh, jobs, and not only for the uh, industry and agriculture, but the farm workers and the agriculture workers lose out. Because then uh, they open the door to big uh, Western, Midwestern growers, corporations to dump in millions and millions of tons of uh, uh, GMO corn into the market. Right. And basically that devastated the agricultural community from the, uh, the employer or the farmer to the agricultural worker. So what happens to them it has a ripple effect. So they were forced to move into the big cities, into Mexico City, Guadalajara, and then finally in the, in the border. Well, well, the most common uh, uh, real hard hit extreme poverty states would be uh, Oaxaca, Chiapas, Tabasco, and Guerrero, all indigenous uh, people uh, in those regions, which are basically Mayans, to speak many, many dialects in regards to the indigenous or original people's uh, uh, region. Well, with on top of that, with the onslaught of the massive uh, migration, you also have the massive uh, uh, deportations by the both uh, Republicans and Democrats, but never before ever seen uh, the onslaught by the massive deportations and enforcement by the uh, Obama administration, who is a Democrat and who had claimed the, uh, he was going to get the whole question resolved on immigration when he came into office. Well, what does he do the first, uh, first uh, act as a president? He goes to Mexico City. And basically, he goes to Mexico City to remind them that they had a, they had a debt that they had to pay. And the Obama basically was representing the corporate interests of the uh, huge oil corporations in this country, and also outside of this country, that they wanted the Mexican oil all over again. When it was expropriated by Mexican President Lázaro Cárdenas back in 1938. Now, today, they basically have taken that and they're now going after the water and the energy as uh, national interest uh, from the Mex for the Mexican people. Well, with this, you know, uh, San Quintín, it becomes a bastation of all the people who have been left, you know, without having to go back to the states and this primary agricultural zone, which there's nothing else but, you know, agriculture. And when Fatima talks about 70,000 workers, there's a little over 110, 20,000 people in the region, and yet not one hospital exists there. And the fact is they have federal programs and laws that apply to the whole question of social security system, that the employers, Driscoll Corporation, which has a subsidiary, which happens to be the uh, Berrymex, which is kind of like a, a clandestine, you know, type of operation. Mm -hmm. They're not us, but we're not them, but it is them. Right. And, and they basically have invested into that company, basically it's their vested, you know, interest, as well as other companies in their region, even though they claim to be Mexican operations. So what's at stake here is Fatima, so, you know, indicated, you're dealing with the whole question of slave wages. Absolutely. And then you're now dealing with the whole question of the return of the guest worker program, which they're now taking you know, people from that region who came in from poorest states, uh, from Oaxaca and Guerrero, in order to ship them over to California. The, the same uh, uh, Driscoll Corporation, now with the Driscoll Corporation's operations all the way from Oxnard, Santa Maria, Guadalupe, and Salinas and Watsonville, that whole region there. And it, Washington, D.C.? I mean, Washington State as well? Washington State also, yeah. uh, basically, they started the work stoppage. It, it was a, a small ranch of less than 400 workers mm -hmm. up in uh, Saget County in Washington State. And basically, they're so isolated up there that it was very difficult to get the message out. But when uh, 70 to 80,000 people, workers, human beings, who were working 13 hours or more for 6 and $7 a day, and when they made that demand, of course, the Los Angeles Times did a, a five-part series prior to that. It was very, you know, in time, you know, timing, the good timing for people to, you know, hear that. So when that kind of came out, it, it just, uh, this work stoppage of that many people 
Well, that hit the headlines and went worldwide, viral. So here we have workers who, and my experience is, you know, I was one of the founders of the United Farm Workers Union, uh, way back from 1965, and I'll, you know, spend my whole life just about, you know, working with and building that union. And we did the great boycott after we just pretty much lost the strike in 1965, and then were forced in 1968, when we were at the height of the anti-war movement, the civil rights movement, the feminist movement, and the student movement. And uh, I, still, I think I mentioned the anti, the uh, uh, anti-war uh, movement mm -hmm. against the Vietnam War. So all these things, you know, now come to couple with uh, uh, people living in extreme poverty. You see the pictures; the pictures are horrendous. Yeah. Uh, we were there. We went to sleep there with them, eat with them, just prior to the march when they uh, were culminating to a one year on March 17th of this year. As Fatima indicated, this, the work stoppage happened March 17th of 2015. It was very, uh, very difficult and hard because very emotional. You see the children that are sick, uh, they're drinking water that is being pumped from the ground with uh, tremendous amounts of sodium, concentrations of sodium in the water and other chemicals in the water because they can't afford to go buy, you know, bottled water. And then on top of that, the, the growers, corporations, have sealed off all the rivers that go and flow into the, into the ocean, which is soft water, fresh water, now being used for cultivation. That's and they have, they have no way of getting that water because they build dams and block the access to that water and the free flow of water. I mean, that's a human yeah. right, you know, and to be doing yeah. that is just, it, how much worse can it get? Yeah. I don't see And, and as Fatima worse. said, if we don't protect the workers and we don't understand what we're eating and we're feeding, being fed three times a day, those hands touch them. Those, they, they breathed on, that, on those berries and they're sick and they have, you know, they've been denied the right to a, a federal program, which is social security, but the employers have not contributed into those plans. So when they, a woman, you know, is is uh, out in the fields working, and not, let's not even forget the injection into the uh, soil. These dangerous chemicals are carcinogenic; right. they cause cancer, and these have been prohibited in California. But Mr. Jo Joseph Miles Ryder, the chair, the chairperson of the Driscoll Corporation, uh, he gets a waiver. And uh, Governor Brown extended his stay on the Department of Food and Agricultural Commission, which he now serves. And we basically went there to ask for his resignation because the audacity of how he can sleep with himself and look at himself in the mirror when he's sitting there picking his teeth, you know, basically with people who are starving, people who are basically dying. I mean, they're dying. It's heartbreaking. And it is. And I think. You know, when I see that, you know, I think, oh, my God, you know, it reminds me of, you know, back in those days in 1965, but nowhere near as horrible as this, these people who are there. It's not gotten uh, any better in all no, this time. And, and the worst case about it is when they go out and protest, uh, they call the, uh, some rumor that there's going to be some violence. They bring in the federal military police. They bring in the, fed the state police. They bring in the municipal police in the hundreds, and then one early morning, they go into their homes and smash their doors, drag people out, shoot them with rubber bullets, and uh, injure them, and then arrest you know, as many, 300, and jail them. And it took about five months before they released the last 15 with a one million bond, peso bond, when they earn uh, 70 pesos a day, which is equivalent to six and seven dollars a day. This is a criminal. Is this criminal? And, and I just, I wish this was common knowledge, you know, that everybody, I mean, I don't, do they sell Driscoll's berries like all across the country here, or is it just in California? It's the largest distributor in the world. It's so just, Driscoll's is everywhere. It's huge. Um, it's in Australia. It's throughout oh this, yeah, throughout the United States, um, in Chicago. Uh, we have actually, we formed uh, many committees um, through our uh, Driscoll boycott, um, now Chicago, New Jersey, Washington, um, San Quintin, Mexico, Tijuana, um, Australia has now uh, shown solidarity, and it's becoming 
um, international movement for these agricultural workers who, at the end of the day, uh, something, it's not about the place of origin or the color of, of someone's skin, um, you know, but it's due to these uh, multi-billion dollar corporations who are exploiting these agricultural workers. It's a human rights issue. Yeah, so, you know, and the fact that they're suffering, they're working 10 to 13 hours a day and not have the minimal necessity to, to survive, which is like basic food or clean water, um, we see that that's the problem here, you know, with corporations just exploiting the workers and taking advantage of the working class who is only trying to survive. I mean, people should, you know, pay attention because this is what's coming if we don't stop these corporations from taking over everything. I mean... Well, they pretty much are taking over government or governments. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we have, we have uh, a government of the corporations and by the corporations and for the corporations. And, you know, when you see what they're doing to people by, you know, having children work in the fields and about them, I mentioned her as a woman. This whole question of women who have testified and some who refuse to testify of sexual abuse, where they actually uh, threaten women if you don't cooperate, and I'll fire your husband. And if you don't cooperate, I may fire both of you. So, you know, you can imagine what some of those women have been traumatized uh, to that degree, to dehumanizing the women. And the government looks the other way. And of course, in Mexico, the rule of law does not exist. I mean, you get arrested there, uh, you're, you're in their mercy, you know, because you have to prove to them, uh, you know, whether you're innocent or not before they let you out. There's no such thing as a uh, court of your peers mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, the, the jury will, you know, met out justice. There is one individual uh, judge who is appointed politically who has ties with, with the government. You take uh, the governor of the state of Baja California, Kiko Vega. He has vested interests, financial interests in these companies that that uh, uh, Fatima mentioned. Yeah, bought and paid for. Yeah, and, and, and there's that hierarchy of these people who, you know, even, you know, have that much power over people. And there's that fear, too. But when you see people, as many as, you know, 60, 70,000 people say, enough is enough. Uh, we can't, you know, our kids and children, you know, are not going to have a chance to ever go to, you know, get an education. And therefore, what happens to them? They become, uh, you know, the new generation for the next uh, group of workers that will end up in the fields under these horrible conditions where you have women who are pregnant, who are dragging themselves in the mud and the water and the cold and the heat and they have to deal with taking their kids early in the morning, 5.30, 5.30 in the morning, go shift them somewhere, or lock them up in their homes. They literally lock them up so that they feel that they're going to be safe. Well, this isn't a life. No. It's, it, life. it's horrible. I mean, I mean, I slept, and some of my other friends that went down, you know, with us, um, they gave us, you know, we're just ladies. When you see the conditions, an outhouse, not even an outhouse, what you want to call it. You see there's no running water inside their homes. And you see the walls with uh, the, the mold, mm -hmm. you know. And to them it's like natural, it's just painted over, you know, with paint, you know. That's but horrible. you can see it, it's horrible. Have, uh, haven't there been some companies now that said they're going to quit buying Driscoll Berries? Has, has any, of, like I thought I heard something about Whole Foods. No, Whole Foods just actually uh, signed a program that we're, we are also against the Equitable Food Initiative, which is uh, totally selling a dream to consumers and agricultural workers. But the actual executive board um, who is a part of this program ends up being the same corporations um, that are exploiting agricultural That's workers now. One is Andrew Williamson. Um, Costco uh, is on the executive board, and uh, the Walmart. UF and Walmart and the and now Whole Foods. Yeah, that's uh, just insanity. Uh, basically, the basically the Equitable Food Initiative uh, really is spearheaded by the United Farm Workers Union, and uh, I have been very critical. I, I yes, uh, I've heard. <laughs> I've been very critical yeah. because. 
in, uh, thousands of workers, you know, sacrifice their lives or our lives and our families to build a union. Now we are, we know that they're good, good-hearted people, but they're really taking positions that don't belong to them. Some are the majority of them are not even farm workers, uh, never were in farm workers. But in this initiative, Equitable Food Initiative, because mm -hmm. many people don't know that, and basically what they're doing, they're saying. We don't believe in uh, strikes anymore. We don't believe in collective bargaining agreements. We don't believe in boycotts, and therefore we don't. We don't we're not going to support a boycott because we have an allegiance now to the Costco Corporation, and the uh, Whole Foods Corporation, and the Walmart Corporation. And to me, that is diabolical because when you see that, you're saying, "So are you saying that you're behind the backs of the workers?" You're going, you're going to go ahead and do this, and you never allowed the workers to be able to say, is this what you know they agreed to? Absolutely not. But only they know, because they made a deal of these NGOs. Of some of them happen to be people who are involved in pesticide and the goodwill of consumers. Like Monsanto and all these, different you know, entities like that. And what you have is this program, and you look at it very carefully, is dominated and controlled by the employers and the corporations. And with the promise that who are gonna sign off on it is these uh, labor unions that basically are gonna sign off with a label. And this label is gonna go on all those products saying to people who are attesting to, well, what about these workers that you know are claiming that, you know, well, we got a little label here. That means that they're protected and they've been meeting all the rules, but there's no adjudication. There's no remedy, exhaust, re, exhaustive remedy for those workers. And it's almost like uh, we're, we're helping workers, you know, live a better life. Right. We're saying, really, uh, you mean to say six and eight dollars a day? Uh, you're wanting to justify that? No. And when it, in, in Tijuana, it's cheaper for people to buy food by crossing the border. About 50 to 60,000 people daily cross the border. And yet, they buy their produce and food across the border rather than buy it in Tijuana. You can forget about how expensive it is in San Quintin because right. you have to travel five and a half hours. That's just so it's horrendous. It is. So and as it, far it, as uh, the boycott is, uh, my experience has been that you know back in 1968 when we went out on a boycott, uh, we had no choice because it's the most nonviolent, the most peaceful. We, and also workers don't have to suffer the consequences of economic, right. you know, uh, hurt for their family, okay? So we didn't have telephone, we didn't have internet, we didn't have Facebook. <laughs> it's a different world now. now. it's a different world. And then we can uh, reach more people to get the word out. And, and the bottom line is that whenever we had, you know, we, everybody's got a camera, right? Right. Uh, so you film it, and we've been able to put them on Facebook and some of these groups that I mentioned. It goes viral. Yeah. Three or four hundred thousand people see it. I totally yeah. see this movement growing daily. Yeah. And oh, did you want to? Uh, we have a website for um, yeah. the cause. I mean, what? Well, that's actually for the Washington. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's Do we have Washington. another one? You can just find us at, at Labor Council for Latin American Advancement, okay. Sacramento chapter. Okay. We are doing a lot of social media. We don't have an actual website um, updated, but if you follow our uh, our organization's um, Facebook and you go at them, um, you'll find all the latest updates. Or boycott uh, Driscoll Berries. Yeah, either. or hashtag boycott Driscoll Berries. Yeah. Um, that has also been uh, really known, and we just want to encourage um, all the viewers uh, to start their own autonomous boycott committee um, and start creating conscience. So if you, if there's anybody um, out there, you guys can definitely contact um, us, and we could guide you or give you the materials needed for uh, for each autonomous community. And just to take quit lead. buying. Just quit buying Driscoll yes. berries. I yes. mean. That's the simplest thing one could do right now, and then get on board with you know trying to support these people that are in the fields. Well, I think the boycott works when it's a one-to-one. -one. Yeah. And I think that's the way it worked. You know, when we didn't have Facebook, but in a way, Facebook worked out where you like. But we always say to people, don't like, share. Right. Share in your Facebook. Right. And the other is talk to people. And when you go shopping, don't be hesitant to go and speak to the manager and yes. say. 
I'm really concerned about these berries and the fact that what I read is that workers are being paid 6 and $7 a day. I don't want to buy berries where they're exploitive in regards to, because you have a label that says Watsonville, made in the USA. There's that doesn't no mean that's where it's there, from. There's no guarantee because right. if, if, if in, in Mexico, they can easily take those labels and plaster them all over those little Same cartons. with organic, right? Yeah, same thing. Yeah. And, and what, what assures the consumer whether they really are organic? Right. In Mexico, you're going to be certified for organic even though it has USDA? I don't think so. I think that there's a, a hoodwink situation with, with the consumer that they, they're not aware of the people who are actually harvesting, picking these with their hands and breathing on them. And I'm, we're saying uh, the only way we can stop this is to this boycott right. where they can, they can meet with the workers instead of refusing to meet with them and bringing the onslaught of this violence on them right. and their families. They can meet with them as human beings and recognize them and say, uh, okay, let's sit down and try to remedy this. Now, I feel really bad yeah. that, that they're going to accept maybe, let's say they accept $14 a day. Right. I'm saying we're, when... We're almost out of time, yeah. so if you guys, I just I want to thank you both for being no, we here. No, we want to thank you. Particularly, yeah, thank it's you. just a really important issue to me. Um, I was on one of your boycott um, protests oh, yeah, and um, it, it's 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 very important that we stand up for the people that feed us definitely and, well thank you too yes, and, thank you you know uh, we we got to keep doing this that's all I right. can say until we fix it and get better people a better way of life exactly because it can come back home no, no. <laughs> hey, we did it okay, thank you maybe I think I talked too much in the <laughs> no, no, you did fine. Any sense or order, we have to play on.